there's consequences to your actions. And to me, that's what I'm seeing. If I think somebody's weird, creepy, flaky, we're just not gonna sell them a gun. And that's the only reason because people that are armed are hard to control. Millions of people are gonna become felons overnight. And this is dangerous because we're seeing it right now. You're seeing it with half of your country. If there's a school shooter, I would be one of the guys that probably should have a gun. You picked up guns and you've defended yourself against a tyrannical government. You don't have one without the other. And as soon as we lose one, we will lose the other. As men that believe in freedom, as men that believe in the rights of the individual, we have been so silent for so long. This is the Nico Lagan Show. Frankly, motivation is bullshit. What you need is discipline, and your mindset is the difference between success and failure. Warning. Warning. This show contains explicit content. Listener discretion is advised. Real. Real. Raw. Raw. And shooting you straight. This is the Nico Lagan Show. And now your host, Nico. Welcome to another episode of the Nico Lagan Show. I'm your host, Nico Lagan. We are in Lake ha- Havasu. 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 Man, I, I knew I would destroy <laughs> something. We are in Lake Havasu in Arizona. We are more specifically at 2 AR Patriot. It's a little, it's a nice coffee shop. No, it's not. It's a fucking gun shop. <laughs> Just so you guys know, it's a gun shop. We're here with Sam Harrison, which is the owner of this beautiful establishment. If you're listening to the MP3, it's worth going to see the video because there's guns everywhere. It's beautiful. It is as manly as it gets. How are you doing today? I'm great, thanks. Thanks for having us. Um, why a gun? Sh- why a gun store? I had uh, a few years ago. I had kind of retired and uh, turned my other business over to my son to run it. And um, in stepping away, I figured I needed something to do. So <laughs> as a hobby, I, I started building AR-15s. I'm, I'm an old army guy, so. So it's just a trip down memory lane for me, and uh, that was a few years ago, and now here we are. <laughs> yeah, wound up uh, running out of space where I was. I was building them in my condo for a little bit, and and then I <laughs> then I moved it over to the hot tub store, and then my son kept parking parking hot tubs in front of my my display cabinet, and uh, so about a year ago we bought this building and uh, renovated it, and this is the the new operation. How dare he put spa in a spa shop? It's like terrible. what the hell was he thinking? Heavy as hell. So. Yeah, what what was he thinking about? The you guys do the custom work here, because right? because every one, bit of it. One thing I've learned about Americans, you guys love your AR-15s. We do. So this building <laughs> is a, a total of two thousand square feet. We've got about eight hundred square feet up in the front. So the the back twelve hundred square feet is is our manufacturing facility. We're yep. a number seven federal firearms license, so it's a manufacturing license. Um, so we do all custom builds in the back of the house. So you walk in and you say, hey, I. I want to build my own AR. This is the, the trigger pull I want. This is the barrel length I want. We do a complete custom build for you. Then we also do the Cerakote. So all these cool colors that you see on the back wall, that's all custom Cerakote work that's done in the back of the house. And that's a, a bake down finish. So now your gun will never rust. Um, mm. It's incredibly durable. It's kind of like powder coat, only much thinner oh, there spec. You go. Um, and then you'll, you'll see, if you look around, you'll see a lot of stuff that has laser engraving done on it, too. And we have got a, a laser machine in back that we just put a guy through school on, on learning how to run that. So that's the, the whole wrap on it. One of the things, so we've been, uh, Josie and I have been traveling to the U.S. for almost seven months now. We're just in an RV and we're going all across the place. And Arizona is really taking the Second Amendment very seriously. Like, a, of all the places, like, it's worse. And I don't want to say worse in a bad way. It's better than Texas. Like, even Texas don't take the Second Amendment as strongly as Arizona, like Arizona seems to be. We have one of our uh, state assemblymen, Leo Biasucci, lives right here in Lake Havasu. And uh, we came up with this idea to, to build him a custom AR. Yeah. And he's the guy that introduced the Second Amendment Sanctuary State Act for the state of Arizona. Can you explain what that is? Because that, that was my, this is where I was going with the this. The Second Amendment Sanctuary State Act says that law enforcement in Arizona cannot um, enforce any law that is uh, contrary to the Second Amendment. Hmm. Um, So if our feds throw out a a new goofy law, whether it's a a bump stock ban or this ban or that ban, and they they try and change it up every week. Um, So this keeps local law enforcement from enforcing any bans like that. So when we did this this custom build for Leo Biasucci, we actually put the script from that is actually 
uh, nice. Cerakoted into the whole handguard. It's got his name on it and everything. I, I, if I'd known we were going to do the podcast, I'd had Leo drop the gun off so we could show it <laughs> off a little bit. It's really cool. So, so why do you think that's important? Why do you think that? Because I'm Canadian. I, I'm a gun owner. I, I, gotcha. I love guns. I'm a martial artist, so I understand that they are tools. They they serve a purpose. To me, I would if if I was a citizen, the the day I have either citizenship here or a uh, a visa. I am getting a carry gun. Like n the day I get approved, I have one. Absolutely. I, um, why do you think it, that's important? It's critical because the the Second Amendment wasn't, and and they'll these politicians will twist it around and and say, well, gosh, you don't need an AR-15 for deer hunting. The Second Amendment has nothing to do with your right to go deer hunting. Mm -hmm. It's about the right to to protect yourself from a tyrannical government, mm -hmm. and that's why we need this. Hell, we need that 50 cal. We need that 50 cal. And if and I could get gun. something bigger, and gosh, I would. Thrower. <laughs> and the flamethrower is the awesome, flame too. behind you. <laughs> so so that, that's what the Second Amendment's about, and, and that's, that's the hill I'll die on. I've got a, a picture of the Second Amendment on the wall in my office. Um, my buddy Bill and I um, formed a, a nonprofit called We the People, Lake Havasu City, and his big push is our First Amendment rights. My big push is our Second Amendment rights. And you don't have one without the other. And as soon as we lose one, we will lose the other. So your first amendment is about freedom. Your second amendment is about the freedom of owning guns. Freedom of speech yeah. and right to keep and bear arms. See, and this is good what you're saying there because this is one of the problems that I've seen in Canada. They're, they're very good at that. One thing that people don't know is that but per capita, we own a shit ton of guns in Canada because we're, we're sure. a hunting country. Sure. Like people now are not as much as they used to, but it is wild up there. Like we have some crazy animals all over the place and... I understand why guns are needed. They are a tool. And th this is one of the part that most Canadians don't understand is you guys won your independence against England. We are still, as Canadian, under England rule. Hard to wrap my head around that. But, <laughs> but there's a difference in, and you see it, uh, I, I like to say you split the U.S. In, into Virginia, go west to east. Anything below it since to understand that simple concept that you guys won your independence while being able to defend yourself. You picked up guns and you've defended yourself against a tyrannical government. Exactly. And which is why the forefathers or the, the, in your, in your bills of right, it talks about the freedom that one, your freedom of speech and two, your right to keep and bear arms. Exactly. And it in this is the portion that's never pushed enough is the part that it is to defend yourself against a tyrannical government. A government that wants to take your rights away, like what you're seeing right now. You need to be able to defend yourself against them. Yep. But this is the mentality of a winner. If you look in Canada, we lost our rights. We we lost our independence. Like we didn't sorry, we never got it. We tried to right. fight it, we didn't get it. But it shows in our in our way of thinking, we're very soft. We're very accepting of what the government wants. We don't, we're not going to revolt against the government. So right now they're able to take all of our guns away. I got you. Because my guns now are paperweights. <laughs> they serve That's no crazy. purpose. They're in my, they're in my, I got them transferred to my best friend and they sit in a locker and he can't take them out. That's terrible. And I, you know, I've got a lot of friends that are Canadian. There's a whole lot of transplants down here. And, um, I think of a, a, a couple of my friends right off that um, she just recently got her, her U.S. citizenship, and so now her husband is on a, a, a green card here. <coughs> and, and it's kind of funny. As soon as she got her citizenship, I, I, I said, hey, Leah, you need to come down and get a gun. And, and she said, nah, it's not my thing. And she, she's not anti-gun. It's just not her thing yep. because it's just it's the, the society that she grew up in. Yep. As I grew can, up in a different Canadian, society. Yeah. I, I grew up in the woods in Wisconsin. And man, we always had guns. The, the thing is, is one of my the, the guy that introduced me to guns years and years ago always told me that gun is the greatest equalizer. That it is. Because he knows I've been, I fought in a ring. I've been training martial arts for more than 20 years and I'm always messing with him. I'm like, bro, sit down before I fucking hurt you. <laughs> and he's always, you know what? Guns. Guns are a great equalizer. I don't care how good you are. If you're not close enough to grab it, I'm going to shoot you. And I I'm got gonna one win. of the small on my back right now. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how much he trusts Canadians. And it's, it's kind of funny. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll run over to the grocery store, and I'll be halfway through the grocery store, and I think, crap, I forgot my gun in my office because I, I, 
quite often take it yeah. out and set it on my desk. And and then I think, you know what? There's 50 other people in the store that are carrying a gun. Yeah. It's This is a, a very, very gun-friendly town. I and mean, heck, this is one of, I believe, 13 gun shop storefronts in, in our little town of 50,000 people. I we saw get as that. many gun shops as we have bars here. It's and, and you know what? I understand why. At the end of the day, I fully understand why guns are needed. Would it be cool to live in a world where guns are not needed? Yes, it would be. But that's a utopia that probably never will happen. So until then, I believe in the rights to own guns. And I believe that what you guys are doing in Arizona is great. Like being able to have, say again how the law is called? The Second Amendment Sanctuary State Act. Love it. Love it. So you're really preventing federal government. We're preventing to, the local governments from enacting tyrannical federal laws. Yeah. Because they, these, these congressmen and senators can't make up crap fast enough. Yeah. And, 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 and not only our, our Senate and Congress, but, but the ATF itself makes up rules. And, and I mean, they're, they're working on one right now. So, so like that 45 that you see right behind you, um, matter of fact, this guy here no too. Yep. Those are, those are AR pistols. Yep. But if you put a, a stabilizing brace like we have, I think, on one of them over there. You mean for the shoulder? Yep. For, yep. It's, well, it's not actually for the shoulder. It's to wrap around your forearm to stabilize oh, it. Oh, okay. But the ATF is now trying to make those, well, not to make them illegal, but to say that you have to register it as a short-barreled rifle with the ATF. Otherwise, you're a felon. There are millions of those things in yeah. circulation right now that people bought legally. Yep. And come May, yep. if something isn't done, millions of people are going to become felons overnight if they don't take that brace off of their, their, their pistol or short-barreled rifle, however you want to describe the thing. And... When, when we were sitting in my office months ago with an ATF agent and she was going over a checklist of things to, to cover for our store, there was different statutes that were cited. And then there were other ones that said ATF ruling and have a bunch of numbers and dots. And I, I said to my employees, I said, guys, you, you see the, the difference here? The, this one here is something actually went through the Senate and Congress and was mm -hmm. voted on and signed into law by the president. The other ones here are just things that the ATF made up. Yep. And our, the agent that was sitting there kind of giggled and said, yep, you got it. So the ATF can just make something up and turn a law-abiding citizen into a felon overnight. And come May, they're going to try and do that with millions of people if it's not stopped. So whoever is listening to this that's in Arizona, if you think that what Sam is talking about is far-fetched, if you think that he's representing a boogeyman that doesn't exist because you do not think that there are people with their own personal agenda that will push laws as per what they want to happen just look at canada all of my guns are paperweight now all of my guns are going to be confiscated when i bought them legally i am a trained individual i've i am more trained than your police officers here are that can carry a gun and even in canada is the same case yeah. they only have to go to the gun range once or twice every year to make sure that they're able to hit at like 10 or 20 feet, a massive target. I can do that offhand with my fucking eyes closed. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and But the point is that if you guys in Arizona or in the U.S., in the southern states, you don't think that this is a reality, be very careful. Because yeah. this is what, for years now, they've been saying in Canada, oh, don't worry about it. All they want to do is to uh, remove the, um, the dangerous guns. And for the people listening to the, uh, the MP3, I'm air quoting here. The dangerous guns. There's no such thing as a dangerous gun, just a dangerous person. Right. And, and you, you've got people like Kamala Harris bragged about yep. how when she was in office, she was going to take licenses away from yep. gun shop owners like myself mm -hmm. for clerical errors on the 4473. And we actually have my, my two guys, Matthew and, and Ty, every month they go and do an audit on every gun that we've sold that month to yep. make sure that every I is dotted, every T is crossed. Because the feds will come in and just snap your license. And then what? I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Is it, is it hard? Because in Arizona and Texas, those are the two last states we've been in. And we've been here for about three weeks. And we were in Texas for about two months prior to that. Is it hard for people to understand that, that comes outside of Arizona, how important guns are for you guys? Do you get a lot of looks? Because you guys are right connected to one of the craziest states that you guys have. <laughs> Like you have a, uh, 
And yes, I'm talking about California. You know, California it, state is fucking crazy. It's it's funny that I, I call them CFers because their boat registration starts with CF. Yeah, there's another reason too. But uh, <laughs> but when 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 CFers come in here, it's kind of funny because a lot of times they'll they'll move over here from from Cali, and I, I yeah. said, well, welcome to America, because they <laughs> they walk into the store and they say, hey, we we just moved to Lake Havasu. Where do we go to register our firearms? I'm like, you don't. We don't do that nonsense here. Yeah, it's 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 just utterly ridiculous. Um, so, so it, you're you're really training these people, and you're and you're hoping like hell that they're not bringing California politics over here with them when they move here. Because this is where I was going with this. Because we spent a lot of time in Austin, so we were in Austin for a bit more than two months. That's fairly liberal, but it wasn't. It wasn't like that. Really? Um, oh no! Like uh, the amount of people that Josie and I have talked about, I talked to that twenty years ago, they're like it wasn't like this. It was conservative. It was more like Texas. Right. But now the more people are leaving California, they're headed to Austin. And now they're turning. We were in Austin. Um, the Gold's Gym, where I work out every day, is right bank downtown. And you can see homelessness everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. They're sleeping on the sidewalk. Yep. They're, but a lot of them are mental issues. Like They're, they're not just people that are, that are poor. They, they really need medical help. But the liberal governments that were that were the local liberal government that were put into power in Austin, it thinks that that's okay. It's acceptable to have people all over the place just drunk, dead on the sidewalk. That's crazy. Don't help those people, right? Just let them be, and that's what they're doing. Yep. And but you see the city just going downhill. You speak to the people that were there for a while, and they're like, "This is not how it was." Like the the more you allow those type of politics to come into play the more this is going to happen. So is that something you're worried about here? Because you're, you're very close to California, I, like as in connected I do worry to about California. It. Um, you know, I'm just looking on, on social media, you'll, you'll see, I've, I've been here for gosh, 14 years now. Okay. And, uh, and you, you see the, the, the movement where they're, the people that are local here on social media are, are getting to be a little more, more liberal as, yep. as, as time goes on. And, and it's just, it's the, the younger generation coming up. Yep. And, um, and you, you worry like hell that, that it's, that it's going to come into town. But, um, you know, I've, I've got property an hour and a half from here up in the mountains, and that's, that's where I'll go when it all goes to hell here. You know, this is something I talk about all the time, and I think this is a problem. We, what you just said there is problematic to me. And I, I'm, I have to say that I unfortunately have been doing that too. And what I'm saying is, what I mean by problematic is that as men that believe in freedom, as men that believe in the rights of the individual – we have been so silent for so long like we have let those young uneducated especially with life take decisions that have no basis in reality right. we have let them it's like having a child at a home that you just you know what i'm tired of dealing with it i'm just going to let it be because at the end of the day i can still continue doing what i'm doing and this is our this is the problem that i'm seeing in the us canada is the perfect example but if you guys are not careful it's going to creep up here Right. Like you guys, California is Canada. It's the same thing. The type, the type of mentality you see in, in, I like to say that we're about five years ahead of you. When it comes to craziness, <laughs> what you're seeing right now, you this is your there. fucking future. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Crazies now are not some, we don't think that craziness is coming. It's fucking there. Right. Like just open your TV. Well, the difference is I'm 56. <clears throat> so yep. now my, my son Taylor, he's 31. Yep. He's stuck with it. Yeah, I'll be long gone. But but, don't, uh, but do you <laughs> that think young man. but do you think that it falls on you guys too as as men to say well, I like to think I raised him properly. Yep. But to say no more. Like cuz cuz that stupidity that we're seeing crawling from California. They're leaving their own they messed up their state to a point that they don't want to fucking live there anymore. So they're like, "Hey, let's get out and let's go fuck it up somewhere else cuz it's going to take 10 to 15 years to fuck it up." But right. then what happens? Then what? Then right. what? So we do have a, a very large part of our, our population here. It, uh, as far as California transplants, a, a big chunk of them are, are um, retired firefighters and retired nice. cops from California. Nice. So they, they've got the right politics, <clears throat> uh, yep. generally speaking. So, okay. so it works out pretty good. But um, and matter of fact, we, we sell a lot of guns to those guys because they can come over here and retire really, really well from the, the pension system that California bankrupted themselves with. Yeah, so, yeah it's a lot cheaper here, that's for yeah. sure. It's, but I think as men, we need to stop letting it happen. I think we need to be better at, 
we're so good at just say, you know what, at the end of the day, it doesn't impact my life day to day. It, it's just, it's okay. Like, we'll just let it slide because I don't have the time for it. But the more we let that happen, the more the chances it's going to turn into Canada. Right. The more chances the state that you live in, to, that you live in right now, will turn into something else if guys like you guys like your son guys like the local government don't do don't stop it because often you know mike tyson said that one of the biggest problem we have in society right now is that people are not getting punched in the face anymore <laughs> and, and, and it's true there's a lot of truth there oh oh yeah there, there there's something to be said when there's consequences to your actions and to me that's what i'm seeing i'm seeing a bunch of man child that have no idea how it actually works, how life actually works, because everything's done for them. From their young age, their parents took care of them. Now they, they're taken care of by the government. The government right. is doing everything for them. They don't understand that it's blue collar guys in the back end that are supporting the whole infrastructure, that are maintained, that are building the buildings, that are maintaining the infrastructure that they use on a daily basis, all done by men that are hardworking men. Yep. And then those morons are and i'm not talking about the hard-working men obviously i'm talking about the the net the lot the, the, the users. Younger, yeah the users beautiful are more are not aware of what actually goes on and they're they don't even realize that without those guys because who do they call when they need help a strong man with a fucking gun that's it when they can't defend themselves who do they call somebody to defend them but they yeah. tend to forget and this is dangerous because we're seeing it right now you're seeing it with half of your country is going crazy if you ask me and if you look just uh, uh yesterday the 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 shooting in tennessee with the the transgender guy girl i'm not sure which it was oh that's what they were talking about okay they you know i i, I read a lot of news on this stuff and it, it, it affects my business and and they're back to the the assault weapons ban, and, and nobody can seem to define what <clears throat> one is. And and one thing they they mentioned is that this transgender person purchased all these guns legally. But they also mentioned that this transgender person had a whole bunch of mental issues. Yeah, of course. Well, then he she didn't buy them legally, mm -hmm. because if you fill out the questions on the forty four seventy three correctly and yep. honestly, yep, then they wouldn't make the transaction. So so it, it's. It's a bunch of shit. Yep. Pardon the French. But no, but it is. But it, it's just it's garbage, mm -hmm. and and they just want to run right over that and and go back to another weapons ban, and and it's it's just ridiculous. They they need to stop the wrong people from owning a gun. You know when I when I talk to the ATF agent <coughs> on the new forty four seventy three, there's a box to check for male, female, and there's another one for non binary. On this See, government issued form, it's on there now, and I I told the ATF agent I said now. If somebody comes in and they check the nine binary, but their license says something different, she says, then you can't sell it to them. And I said, well, is it okay if I just don't sell it to them if they check the transgender box? And she said, you've got that right too. And I said, well, that's where we draw the line. If I think somebody's weird, creepy, flaky, we're just not going to sell them a gun. And, and you, to me, this should this is a declaration of your craziness. <laughs> right then and there. If you are not a man or a woman, you already said it. You're, you're right there. I'm like, uh oh, red flag. Right then exactly. and there, you're giving me a massive red flag. Exactly. The you know to go back to the shooting. Th this is something I spoke about before, and I I'm happy to speak about this again because if you look at the background of those school shooters, they all had mental issues. At one point, they were all flag. Every single one of them. Every single one of them was on some type of medication. Every single one of them had predefined mental issues yep. but we don't talk about that yeah Th this is not the it's part about the gun it, it's about the gun exactly <laughs> but they don't talk about the fact that on a yearly basis there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people that defend themselves with guns right that the police off the police is too far away i lived in the woods i've seen two or three cops in five years and two of them were in town and i was 15 minutes out of town i've seen one where i lived did you see the sign on the door no when seconds count, the police are minutes away. Yeah, absolutely. It's five minutes. In the biggest urban centers in the U.S., their goal is five-minute response time. <laughs> five minutes. I have time to hurt you very that's, badly in five minutes. It's an eternity. Oh, if you're... Oh, yeah. If you don't know what to, how to defend yourself, you don't have a gun to defend yourself, oh, you're in shit. But the other part that they never talk about, and this is one thing that blows my mind, you guys have 
a lot of veterans, a lot of veterans that are unfortunately not employable for some specific reason that I'm not sure to understand why it's so hard for them to get jobs. But you get, you have men that were ready to die for their country. You have men that puts their duty of, uh, above their own lives and you don't use them for what they are. Why, how do you, in my old job, I, I'm not going to name names because that's not legal, but let's just say that I worked in a very high-end telecommunication company and one of the companies, one of the entities that we dealt with were from Israel. They had a bombing. Uh, do you remember there was somebody that attacked one of their schools in the U.S.? So now oh, what, yeah. they, what they started to do is that they started putting those, um, those cement blockers for cars so that, that cars can't go over like very close to the school. Sure. But what they did is that they started hiring, you know, IDF, the uh, Israeli Defense mm -hmm. Force. So they would hire IDF, old IDF military, because everybody there is, had to go through the IDF. And they're posting them in school. Something that I've been saying for 10 years. You have a bunch of veterans, especially in the U.S., how many of those veterans would die for those kids? No questions asked. Absolutely. No fucking questions asked. And you're not fucking using them. Absolutely. How, cra how easy would it be to take all those veterans that are dying for a job, that can't find a fucking job anywhere, and you tell them, bro, what you're going to do, you're going to take that gun, and you're going to protect those kids. Tell me you're not fixing your problem. Right then and there, you know, there will not be one other fucking school shooter. It's absolutely crazy. You know, I... Um, for three years, I, I worked as an assistant teacher in the, in the auto shop at the high school here in town. And um, it was just a, a little part-time gig, something to do in retirement. And, yep. uh, and I, I thought it was absolutely crazy because you couldn't have a weapon on the premises. And, and gosh, if, if there's a school shooter, I would think I, I would be one of the guys that probably should have a gun. Of course, 100%. But, but the school district policy was no. But how crazy is that? Instead, post a guy that is patrolling with a gun. Yep. Telling you your problem is solved right there. Yep. We, it's such a simple principle that any type of bullies, martial art, if there's something martial art has taught me, bullies are cowards. As they will only attack soft targets. They will only attack people that they believe to be weak. Yeah, they're not going into the police station and shooting it up. It's interesting, isn't they're it? They're going into a school, of a course. grade school. And it's always the schools that have a nice ban on it. Like, right. hey, look, free guns. It's a free gun zone. Might as well advertise that you're weak. Might as well advertise that, you know, right here, there's no protection. Just come in. We can't stop you. So do whatever you want. It blows my mind how it's simple what I'm saying. I'm not, it's not fucking brain surgery here. It's, Post an armed guy that simple. and a military guy, a guy that knows what he's doing and a guy that's ready to die to defend his fucking ki to defend the kids that are there. You know, I'm, I'm quite certain between military uh, and, and, and law enforcement, yep. uh, retirees. Yep. I think we would have no problem defending every single school district. And not only that, but those guys are already trained. Yeah. They already know the codes to call out. They already know the tactics to defend that school. It's, you're not training them from the beginning. Right. You're taking guys that have done this before, but instead of doing it in a foreign country, you're doing it where they care. You right. take local guys that care about those communities, and you're telling them, bro, from now on, you're defending those kids. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Great concept. And, and it's not... It, it could do it here. It could be done tomorrow. How many people... Start announcing to people, we will need veterans to protect our school. We have jobs for you. You'll fill your... your yep. You, Absolutely. You, you will lack schools. You won't have enough schools to hire all the people that are going to want to work for. Yep. And how many school shootings do you think is going to happen after that? Zero. Exactly. Yep. Uh, on, there's going to be one that's going to test the waters and he's going to get shot down and then others will say okay maybe that's not like you said it's all about the soft target yeah that's, that's where they're going to go where they, where they see the gun free zone sign that's that's the spot to be it, it just amazes me that s such a simple concept is so foreign to the people yeah that we because I'm not the first one to say this. I'll continue saying it until, uh, until I'm blue in the face, but this is still a fucking simple reality. Like you said, if you had your gun in that garage and something would have happened, you were the first one to shoot. Right. You're not going to question it. There's a guy with a gun and there's children. I'm going to defend the children. This is what a man does. That's exactly it. 
but yet we refuse to do it. it. It blows my mind. I don't. I don't under. I cannot wrap my head around that one. But instead, they just want to legislate the guns away from us. It's hard not to. It is hard not to turn this into a conspiracy theory. It's hard to say because this is such a simple solution. Why else wouldn't they want to do it? Because they don't want us to be armed. That's it. And that's the only reason because people that are armed are hard to control. So it's hard not to fall into a conspiracy theory when you know that the solution is that simple. And plus Tennessee. We, we spent almost a month in Tennessee. There's guns fucking everywhere there. Oh, sure. And people, and Tennessee's my favorite state up to now. I fucking love Tennessee. Tennessee was great. Don't tell me that they don't have the people there to take care of those kids, right? It's the volunteer state. Of course they do. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. The Hopefully... This does not happen here. Hopefully, guys like you just keep being vocal or at least start being more vocal. Because this crazy. I'm telling you, if you guys let it happen, Canada is gonna is your future. I'd hate to hate to see that come here. Yeah, but I think I think that men need people need to stand up for for what they believe in and stop letting those legislator, those people from California changing your laws because they don't feel comfortable with them. Right. when they could stay in the state that they fucked up themselves or go or go to another state like New York go to New York they're fucked there too so just go there <laughs> just go to another place that they're fucked but it's it's interesting how they don't want to do that right they want the freedom that your beliefs brings but they want to bring their politics to mess up your freedoms that is it i i want to thank you thank you again for letting us record here thanks Bet. for the conversation um, this to me is smells like freedom in here. <laughs> is there is there something you want to say? Is there something you want to plug? Is there? You know, if I can get a, a shameless plug for two AR Patriots, a hundred percent. This is go, the spot. So, a hundred percent. Go for if it. You, if you need it, come on down. And if you're if you're not local, we ship them anywhere in the country, or even to California. We got to make it California compliant before we can ship it over there. So, so you got to paint it pink. I'm just kidding. Uh, you you got to put a magazine lock on it. They, they, they've got a whole bunch of goofy rules, and and so they're they're DOJ. I really, I wasn't gonna send them over there, but my insurance agent is from California, and her her son is a gun nut, so I've been shipping them over there for him. Okay. So so that's the only reason we became California compliant on that stuff. So you want to repitch your your store and then add the boom at the end. Absolutely. So 2 AR Patriots, we're located at 72 South Smoke Tree, right in the middle of downtown Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Boom! You've been listening to The Nico Lagan Show. Nico has been involved in the martial arts for 20 years. He's a Muay Thai coach, focus coach, podcaster, and sought-after public speaker. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you've gotten some useful and practical information. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Coach Nico Lagan and on YouTube at The Nico Lagan Show. See you next time.